some other things. So I've got right at, or had right at about 10 years of law enforcement. Um, I now do this pretty much full time. Um, I'm also an underwater drone pilot. So that's what got us into uh, working the missing persons cases. Um, and then yeah, I read a lot about you know about you and kind of what you did and you know some of the people that you have found. Um, I said I said I was going to try to talk to you. It's okay. Um, it's okay. <laughs> but uh, that, so, like, yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. And I was going to say then that's look. I don't want you to. We just want you to know that we're here to help you. We don't expect anything out of you whatsoever. We'll never ask for a dime. Uh, really, the only thing we do this for is just to uh, try to help families get some closure or find answers on things, okay? So I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm, well, first, I'm going to let you tell us kind of your story and things, uh, kind of what's going on, and then we'll ask some questions. And if at any point in time you, you get upset, it, that's perfectly okay. Uh, we can come back and visit it. Uh, we're, we're just here to help no, you, okay? Good. I'm just I'm just trying to prepare, like, prepare myself all day because when you, when you actually um, – uh, messaged me, it kind of just floored me because I mean, of all the missing people, um, you know, why I me, mean, you know, and I think that's what it hit me, yes, ma'am. And it, um, because I know there's so many, you know, and I've read of so many missing, you know, kids. And um, so my daughter, um, she does have three children um, one's two, one's four, and one is 10. And I've got custody of the 10 year old, and the two other girls live with the dad. Um, and she's never ever gone like a week without calling me. Um, she did, um, at, at one time, well, I can't say at one time, um, she did get addicted to pain medication. Yeah. Um, went to rehab. Um, well, then a girl came into rehab that was addicted to heroin. Um, she got, got Kendall on heroin mm -hmm. and then she started meth. Well, um, she went to rehab. About six months, got clean, um, and started working, doing real well. And I don't know what happened. Um, I guess she relapsed. Um, but my thing is, it doesn't matter, um, you know, a drug addict or or whatever. She's still my my, my child. Yes, ma'am, and that's that, that's one of the things we want to make sure that you know that as well. Like we uh, we don't judge she's anybody. Trying, you know, she tried. Um, and she had a boyfriend at the time. I took the last time I spoke to her, I took her to rehab and I dropped her off. I paid a lot of money for this rehabilitation center. Yeah. And she stayed about 26 hours. And her boyfriend, which is now um, in jail, um, he had four failure to appear and then a drug charge. But um, he said he dropped her off at the Carolina Center, which that's the last time he saw her. I know that's a lie. Uh, she never has been back to the Carolina Center. Um, and I do have somebody which, you know, is willing to talk to law. I tried to call our detective yep. through Greenville County, but he, I don't know why he will not call back. Um, but I was going to go report at Spartanburg County because for some reason Spartanburg County moves so much faster than Greenville County. Um, and so he is locked up in Greenville County. So the last time he saw her was September 30th. Or, it's a little bit before you got arrested, I think. And he dropped her off at the Carolina Center off of Highway 14 in Greer mm -hmm. to the rehab. Um, but I know she didn't ever go there. And I do know a guy that showed up at my house. I am remodeling my home right now, so I've not been staying there. Um, but he showed up at my house and told me that he had seen um, the guy many times shoot up my daughter um, and just like leave her in the floor. Yeah. Um, just blue. But he said he never would let her leave to go get help. Okay. Do and she's called me many times, you know, where he'd beat her up or, um, you know, hungry or something. Yes, ma'am. And I always would take her money or, you know, um, go pick her up and she would stay with me for a couple of days. Um, and then she would go back to that, to that guy. And I know why, because he was supplying I guess her the drugs or whatever. Yeah. What uh what was his name? Yeah, and she's been missing since June twenty first, that's correct? Um, yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so I haven't I, we haven't spoke to her since um since June since I dropped off at rehab. And but somebody said that they did see her and talk to her in September. She's like, okay. 
Okay. So, you know, I was like, well, you know, I figured she was, I, she felt maybe I was upset with her because she left rehab, you know, because I did fork out a lot of money. Yeah. And I felt, you know, she was just upset with me, but she never, ever, and so when we finally reported her, you know, I kept, like, we kept putting Facebook posts out, never nothing. And then I told, you know, me and my daughter got together and was like, we've got to do something because it's getting, now it's getting to the point where we're scared. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Just try to answer them the best you can, all right? Okay. What kind of cell phone did she have? Um, Several. I mean, he got her several cell phones through T-Mobile. Um, I know T-Mobile because I got an old deal, and I don't know if I saved it or not. I'll have to look at my burn stuff. Uh -huh. um, uh, that T-Mobile, she had one with um, AT&T. Um, Straight Talk, I know she kept getting phones through Straight Talk um, because it was like a prepaid plan. Yeah. Um, but I know I called every one of those that, that she had, all the numbers that I had saved, and they're all, but I do have all the numbers that was that she had. Okay, now with those, do you know, did she have any iPhones, or are they all Androids, or what kind of phones were they? Do you know that? Um, yeah, they were all iPhones. Okay. I think the, 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 the ones, yeah, they were all iPhones. Maybe like she had two Walmart phones. Okay. Now, and so the reason I asked that about the service provider is one, because, you know, obviously straight talk's a little harder to deal with. But the good thing about them being iPhones, uh, do you have any idea of email address that she would have used? Anything with her iCloud? And the reason I ask you that is because you could go back and we could try, or you could try, if you knew her email, even though the phones are cut off, they've updated the Apple software to where they can ping the phones. Now, again, I know that she had a bunch of different ones, right? But the phone numbers that you knew her last two have, if you're able to do that, that kind of paints us a picture, right? So that's going to be the next best thing because everybody has a cell phone on them all the time. So Okay, let me see. Let me look. I just want to see if... Because um, I've got her old Facebook. Um, let me see if her, her email... No, I, I could get it, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, okay. I know my daughter has it. Yeah, so let me ex kind of explain that to you, okay? So that that's not something, and again, so we're not private investigators, right? We are prior law enforcement, but we are not currently private investigators, right? But I can let you know the things that will help you to try and find these answers. Now, if you're able to do certain things, then we can clearly, obviously, we'll do everything we can to try to locate her, right, as far as going out into the actual looking for but the the easiest way for us to do that is to narrow it down as much as possible right phones if you are able to figure out e basically any email address that she had linked to that right so what you can do is that find my iphone um, you can do the same thing similar uh, with androids but since you don't have one is really no necessary need to explain that too much but if you can figure out what her icloud account email was right you can go in and it will literally give you if, I mean, and there, you never know what she has saved because there's different ways to save it, right? So she could have all the, her messages, her phone call logs, um, her location, if she had that turned on. Um, and then it'll be able to track basically where her phone was the entire time. So in, in essence, it's basically just as good, if not better, than a search warrant because all the information already be on there, right? Um, right. Even if there's pictures that she took and deleted, sometimes they, they – and it, again, it all just is dependent on the way she had her phone set up. However, what, we're, what we would be mostly concerned with was that location, because what we do is we take the last known location um, and basically triangulate that. So, or the way that we normally do it when we're looking for a person and a car that's missing together, uh, because we, we do a lot of searching in bodies of water. Uh, we'll take that and we'll make a 10 square mile radius and every body of water within that 10 square miles is what we would look for. Now, with, with, your, with this case here, uh, in reference to your daughter, what it sounds like or you know and again i hope i hope to god i'm extremely optimistic and i pray that there's absolutely nothing wrong with her at all right but in the slim the slim chance that there is it it would sound or it would appear as though if the last time somebody saw her she had overdosed and she was turning blue if something bad like that happened it would lead me to believe that somebody got scared if something did happen to her like that and tried to for lack of better terms dispose of her somewhere correct Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, and again, I, that's what I think, and, and I hate to think, you know, of course, I think positive, but prepare, you know, for the negative, uh, for the for the worst uh, scenario. But um, and my heart breaks for you because, or it breaks for everybody that I deal with these cases, or that we deal with these cases with them. Um, oh yeah, but, I can imagine. But when I, but 
because I am local. I mean, we're both local uh, to the upstate. And for some reason, when I was scrolling through, I saw hers, and it said Greenville easily. But I think what really got to me was so she does. She, I saw her with pictures with little kids. I'm assuming those are her children, right? They are. She's got um. She's got three. So yes, one just turned two, four, and ten. Yes, ma'am. So when you asked, like you know, as far as why out of all the people that are missing that for that exact reason right there right like we it's it's owed to you not only as a mother but as a grandmother like nobody has any continental clue we don't even have any clue what uh what you're going through right now but we do know that anything that we can do to help that's what we're going to do right so that's that's why we're here um the so the biggest thing like i said that i want you to try to work on is seeing if you can figure out her iCloud information right for her, her for for her phones um, that way okay, we, I can probably get um, like the last three or four maybe that she used. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's fine. And like I said, you don't have to do that right now. Obviously, we're okay. we've been in touch now. You've got my stuff. I mean, we're going to be back and forth because it's not like I'm just going to talk to you this one time and we give up, right? Like we'll do everything we can until you get some kind of answers, whether it's tomorrow or five, ten years from now, right? That's just the way that works. But we, See, that, that's something I can't. I just don't think I can do. No, ma'am. And, and and trust me, we don't want it to be that way, but like I'm saying, we'll, we will do everything we can uh, to get you there. You know, what, what to do now. Yes, ma'am. But, so, and that's, and that's what, that's, that's kind of where we come in, or that's where we specialize at, right? So we can, I can point you in the right directions, I can try to set you up with everything, uh, you know, for the law enforcement side. But where we really shine at where, like, we come in is one... Sometimes people don't even know different avenues that they can take, right, as far as resources or tools they can use to try to pinpoint a location. But once those locations are pinpointed, I mean, we have, we have, basically, as far as our resources go, we have tons of dogs that we could use, uh, or we know tons of people with cadaver dogs that are more than willing to use them. And again, not, we don't, we never, and that's one of the bigger things that we get too. Unfortunately, so, sometimes when we call and we start talking to people, the first thing they ask is, what is this going to cost? And we try to make that as clear as possible. We will never ask you for a dime ever, um, n nor will anybody that we ever work with. The only people that we ever have anything like that uh, that takes place is if they do any kind of DNA test and like privatize that. But you, you don't, I don't think you have to worry about that at all. But that, that's where we're at. If we can figure out, or, and it'll take some digging around a little bit, but if we can triangulate where she was 100% confirmed at last, that that that's where we get our best results at is going and when we put our feet on the ground and then start looking and then that's when we can start turning things up well obviously and again uh from me and everybody that i work with we we all just want to tell you how sorry we are for that but we are going to do everything we can to get you help or to help you try to get some answers now we can't promise you anything right but i can promise you that we will work pretty much we will exhaust all means before we tell you that there's nothing else that we can do right there's always something else that's getting over overlooked or something and that's what we do that that's 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 where we kind of shine at and i think that's why so many people have taken a liking to us is uh like we, we well you gave me hope if because i'm kind of got discouraged but <laughs> i can't tell you enough when i got a message today something it just i don't know but you gave me hope and you guys have nothing else. If you can't even find anything, you still would be you know, just angels to me. Yes, ma'am. Just come out of nowhere. And again, and we, we greatly appreciate that. Um, and, but one thing I do want to do, and like I said, as soon as we get off the phone, I'm going to start looking in those areas on Google Earth, right? And uh, you just start working on those things that I ask you to try to find. And that's and again, that only helps everybody, okay? Uh, like proof that's that much better it helps not only us in attempt to try to locate her but it's also going to help law enforcement as far as a case where if it comes out that you can you can argue a lot of things but you can't argue facts right and that's that's kind of that's how we do everything we don't do anything for lack of better terms half ass everything we do is going to be a hundred percent or we're not going to do it at all you know what i mean so right so that you we, you've got that going you know, um other than that, I, I think I'm fine, you know, I don't, I really can't, you know, think right now at the moment, um, but if I do, uh, if you don't mind, I can message you, um, and, and maybe you can get in contact with me as soon as you can get a chance. 
Yeah, I mean, and I, like I said, I'm the owner. I mean, we're it's a team effort, but right. But I'm I am the owner, and any and all those messages and stuff they come directly to me. If you need anything at all, day or night, I hardly ever sleep anyway because we stay pretty busy. So all you got to do is just tell me. Yeah, me either, so. <laughs> I'm up too, so I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So, if, but if you if you message me, it doesn't matter. Two, three o'clock in the morning, uh, I, I I'm more than willing to talk to you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. You just don't know how much I appreciate all the help that even just all, just the offer, just to help find her and bring her back home. You know, whether it's I guess uh, I guess peace of mind yes. or you know she comes literally walking through the door. Yes, ma'am. But I do, and it's, so something that I ask everybody that we talk to is so I, I I get it. It's probably this is like one of if not the worst time frame in your life, right? But just something that I've seen, I've noticed that kind of helps people a little bit to process that. So instead of all, thinking about all the bad, if you don't mind, and again, it's kind of personal, I guess, but is there any one thing that you would like to, for the, basically, if you could tell the world anything about your daughter, what would you want them to know? <laughs> There's so many. Um, I guess she's got the biggest heart, she's got the biggest heart ever. <laughs> And she loves, loves, loves her kids. Okay. All right. You know, she, and that's what got me worried. She would not do this long without seeing them. Yes, ma'am. Especially the mother, you know, because I've been five months, you know, without seeing mine, so I can only imagine, you know, if nothing's bad happening, how she feels. All right, so first and foremost, you have to forgive me because I was super sick whenever we first started filming that video, and that was on Monday, um, November 28th, and today is December 2nd. It's been super sick. I'm in the Gulf of Mexico. Allergies have been messed up. Kind of felt like I had the flu. Well, fast forward to the story, right? That's what everybody's here for. So I ended up speaking to Cynthia, the mom. I found their story on Facebook, and I had attempted to reach out a couple times in order to reach out to them and try to see if to try to see basically if we could help them as much as humanly possible. Again, I never jump to conclusions on anything. Uh, as far as these cases, I definitely try to take them and work strictly off the facts, use the common sense approach. And I know that sounds like what well, everybody does that. And sometimes you look into things so much that like you, you, anybody that's ever been in any kind of investigative role or law enforcement or anything like that, you get so attached to these cases and you, like, you become a part of that, right? Like and if you're truly passionate about what you're doing you're going to become a part almost in a sense you're almost becoming a part of that family right like it i personally i was personally vested after the first time i talked to cynthia and as you can tell uh and i have already talked to cynthia about all this and she was super cool with us making this video because it brings awareness and it also goes to show that there are hundreds and thousands of cases just like what they had going on uh, to where they people just don't know people just have no clue what ends up happening uh, with their family members and fortunately this is one of the times where the ending realistically the, I, the ending could not have been any better than what they wanted so fast forward so this is five days again happened on the 28th of november that i made contact with cynthia first and then today is december 2nd 2022 so within five days again you have to think keep in consideration six months at this point it's almost went by to where nobody has any idea where she's at allegedly nobody's saying anything there, there's no known hints uh it's basically in all sense gone cold well the approach that i like to use is there's so many resources out there as far as social media and that's why we started doing what we were doing was it's something as simple as posting the flyer to the page it started getting spread so people started messaging me uh, people started reaching out and it is the power of the public eye and the power of caring individuals coming together that were able to get this message out to Kindle. Um, uh, just, just to kind of let you know, I'm not going to go in any kind of details about their personal stuff whatsoever. She is alive. She is well. She is safe. Um, the way that I was notified about this was I was actually working another case, which we're dealing with out of Greenwoods. Part two of that's getting ready to launch as well as soon as we finish it up. And then... As soon as I got off the phone with them, I saw that the mother was calling me, and it's like 8.30 
here, so we're an hour behind East Coast time. Um, so I answer the phone. You can tell, obviously, she's upset, um, but she also sounds relieved, and she, you know, and she tells me she was like, you know, just thank you, and you know that part of me was like, all right, you know, I greatly appreciate that, but also like, oh God, did something bad happen? And she says that she had been found, um, and she had talked to her, and that everything's okay. And I immediately, like, when I tell you that every one of these families, because there's a ton of other videos that we have, and I will not release anything until the families and basically every everything is up to date on that, right? Um, and the families are okay with it basically until the case is closed now i can release some things but i will never release pertinent information until everything is done over in public knowledge right uh and that's just the way that i operate could i could i do that absolutely but that's not what it's about everything that i'm doing is to document these cases to give hope to other people that are going through the same things that something as simple as reaching out to organizations like mine or any others and that's the thing i it, i want us to get as big as humanly possible right but the fact that i'm still having or you know that there are cases out there that keep me in business that's a bad thing for me personally because i wished i could close the doors tomorrow and not have to do anything with this i wish this wasn't a problem but that's that's not the world we live in but so she, when i got that phone call it was almost it, it's a huge relief number one because i get so invested with talking to these family members and hearing their stories that again like i said they become a part of my my family or vice versa i become a part of theirs in my mind you know, and that that's what drives me to help them as much as humanly possible. Um, little not so well known fact about me as well. One of the main driving forces behind this is I had one of my best friends basically ever. Uh, we were in the Marine Corps together. He actually ended up committing suicide when we got back from a deployment. And, you know, that was one of those things I was like, man, I never, ever saw that coming. And I know how I struggled with that to this day right i mean it doesn't get any easier and if his mom's watching this you know she i've i've had these conversations with her too and it's something that it's a piece of you that goes missing like and you can't explain it it's just gone but i can only imagine how bad it would be if that had happened or he had went missing and you didn't have those answers and that's what drives me to do this because no family member should ever have to wonder where a loved one is so long story short this isn't necessarily about me whatsoever it just goes to show that the power of what we're going through or the what we're trying to build here to bring awareness to these cases for the people that feel like all resources or all sources have been exhausted we're just that that's all we're doing we're just trying to bring light to these cases get the word out there use social media because it's a super powerful tool i mean as you can see six months nobody has any clue um this is a case that's been filed with law enforcement uh you've had investigators looking into it. you've had everybody but in five days, in five days, from Monday until this Friday of the same week, she's been found and located. I just facilitate that in a way. I'm, I'm vested in it, but the community, the people that share these things, the people that subscribe, the people that follow, that like and share all these messages and these posts that we make, that's what it's all about. And you're never going to experience anything better in life, I don't think, than giving a family member that answer. And sometimes it's extremely extremely difficult right like they're not all always this good they don't always have this kind of happy ending to them but that's where you know that it's basically become my life's mission at this point that's all i want to do the more people that we can help the better it is uh, to that family i hope nothing but the best for you we're all praying for you we're all super excited that that's the way that it ended up i know y'all got a ton of questions i know y'all got a ton of stuff y'all got to go through together cynthia it was an absolute honor uh for you to let us be a part of that. We thank you for everything. And, you know, as anybody watching this can tell, you watched all the way through in the front part, that that sound in a mother or a father's voice when we talk to them and they're upset about their child, it's, it's a sound and it's, a, it's just something that you can't, I can't quite put my finger on it, what it is, but it is so much pain in, in just words. It's indescribable. And if we can help anybody whatsoever in any way to try to get some closure on any of that or you know somebody that we could help, we're out here doing it. I mean, the proof is there. Case after case after case we're going through. We're helping people get answers. And there's some, you know, that we would love to be able to turn it around like that overnight. And some of them are easier to work than others. But all of it has one thing in common. 
whatever we do, any family that we talk to, anybody that we get to working with, I absolutely 100% swear that I will do every single thing possible to try to get you answers. And anybody that is a part of this organization under me is the exact same way. Uh, other than that, again, con congratulations. I'm so happy. Uh, words don't even describe it, especially right here near Christmas time, right after Thanksgiving. Um, if y'all need anything at all, reach out to me. Anybody that's watching this, if you know anybody that we could help, make sure that you pass them forward. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe on this. And other than that, everybody be safe. If you need something, reach out. If you see something, say something.